Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Francesca and I'm back today to do a tag, the Pride Flag book tag. It is the last day of June, it is the end of Pride Month and I wanted to celebrate it by doing this tag because now I am part of the LGBT community and that is a big deal. And so I wanted to come back with this tag, there is going to be a video coming up in the next few days about why I've been away, what's happened. If you have questions, those will be addressed and answered in that video. Today is the day for something else. Before we go any further, I would like you to go and watch the original video because the creator of this tag did an amazing job of explaining why these are the colors of the pride flag. He goes into a little bit of history. It was very interesting to watch and I definitely learned a lot. That being said, I also want you guys to know that all the books that I'll be using for the answers for this tag are LGBT themed. So, first up is Red, which signifies life. A book with a spirited protagonist totally proud of who they are. I might be wrong with this one, but I'm gonna go with A from Every Day by David Levithan. A is a soul that does not have gender and every day A wakes up in a different body. I say that I'm not 100% sure of my choice because I'm still listening to the audiobook. I've actually started it this morning and I'm like one hour and a half in, so too soon to say, but I just love everything about it. That book is making me so emotional and nostalgic in a way. I cannot explain why, but it's just amazing. I mean, I'm not sure A knows what's going on or why it happens to them but at the same time they know what to do and they understand themselves and I just I love who they are it's just incredible and I'm loving it and apparently I really love David Levithan because I read Love is the Higher Law two years ago and it was my favorite book of that year I think it was 2006 17 or 2016 and I just adored it and now I'm adoring this one so I should be reading more David Levithan. Next is Orange which signifies healing, a book that made you as a reader find a deeper meaning or catharsis in your life. The book that I choose for this one is a book that not enough people talk about. It came out years ago but I don't care because it's a fucking great book and it is Dance on My Grave by Iron Chambers. It's not the first time that I mention it. It won't be the last. I still carry it with me to this day because it's, it's one of my favorite books of all times. It features a gay main protagonist, but and it is a YA contemporary novel, but it doesn't really focus on the love story or on coming out. It is about friendship and what happens when friendships or relationships in general become toxic and obsessive and what that dust you and it made me realize so much about myself and about the kind of friendships that I had back then it helped me a lot and it was hard to read for me because it was I felt it so close to me but I just I loved it and I hope that someday I'll be able to find the strength to pick it up again because I need to reread that book. Next color is yellow which stands for sunshine, a book that fills you with so much joy it could brighten even your darkest day. I'm gonna say red, white and royal blue by Casey McQuinton. Okay, so this book is everywhere and it is everywhere for a reason. This book is just, it is so good. I had to read it when I was alone at home when my roommate was not here because I kept laughing out loud and squealing and it was just it was just so good and it's basically um, about the son of the first female president of the United States that falls in love with the grandson of the Queen of England and it was incredible and the thing is it's not about just the love story between them it's about 
attraction. It's about coming to terms with who you love. It is about politics. It is about so many issues that are so fucking relevant to today's society. It just, it blew my mind away. I was not expecting it, but it was incredible and it made me so happy. Green, which signifies nature, of course. A book that is set out of this world, a reality different to our own. For this one, I'm gonna go with the Thousandth Floor series uh, by Catherine McGee. This is kind of a YA series that has so much drama going on so you have to be in the mood to read that kind of book because it's all about friendships and relationships and people breaking up with people and then getting back together and then breaking up again. It is a good series, don't get me wrong, I really really liked it. It goes deep. There are some taboo topics going on as well. I mean there's incest which um, and it, I, I just loved it. I just absolutely loved it. And it is out of this world because, I mean, it is set in New York, but it is set in a kind of dystopian future, like 100, 200 years from now, where rich people live not like on the Earth's surface, like every other commoner, but they live in these huge tall towers and the highest of them all is in New York and it has 1,000 floors and it's just, it was good. It is kind of a guilty pleasure, but it was good. And one of the characters is bisexual and at a certain point, I think she has a relationship with a lesbian or another bisexual character, I don't know, it is not specified, but still, you have LGBT themes in this one as well. Next color is blue, which stands for peace. I, I am so sorry for the noises in the background. This is what I have to work with today, okay? So, a book where one of the characters finds peace with a difficult truth. And I'm gonna go with a book that I just finished and not enough people are talking about it, which is totally unacceptable to me because it is a it is a great book and it is so relevant today because it is about immigration and oh my god it's just it blew my mind away it is the grief keeper by alexandra vijasante it is about a girl marisol she crosses the border to the united states illegally and she is detained in a detention center with her sister Gabby and they are asking for asylum because they are escaping from gang threats and gang violence in El Salvador and their request is not approved but then she gets an offer that would allow her to stay in the United States if she wears a cuff that would make her absorb someone else's grief and that just, the whole book says so much about illegal immigrants and what they have to go through and about white privilege and just, there's so much going on. And it is not just the main character, but also a few other characters in the story have to face a hard truth that they're not willing to accept or that they cannot really um, deal with and it was beautiful it was so moving and fantastic and there's a lot of spanglish um, in the book and i just i absolutely loved it and if you have the chance i would recommend the audiobook because listening to the narrator speak in spanish was just out of this world and I understood everything and it felt so good and it was just incredible and I'll talk more about it in my wrap up whenever I'll get to filming it because I'm going to New York <laughs> in a couple of weeks and I won't be filming my wrap up before then or while I'm in New York so God knows when but I'll be talking about this book more in the future you can bet your ass is a will. And the last color is purple, which stands for spirit. A book that deals with LGBT plus themes and religion. And I actually have two different books for this question. The first one is the book of Essie. Um, I just, I loved this book so much. I was not expecting it at all, but 
it kind of destroyed me because it was so hard to read. The main protagonist is the daughter of a pastor, I think, or was it a priest? I'm not good with um, roles within the different kinds of churches. I'm so sorry about that. But anyways, her father is a priest or a pastor. I think it's a pastor because he's married, right? So he has to be a pastor. And um, she is pregnant. And she, of course, has to marry because she cannot have a child outside of wedlock. Are you kidding me? Um, and there are so many trigger warnings. There's homophobia, there's rape, there's sexual assault, there are cults and violence, and it can get brutal at times. But I would force anybody to read it because I think that it says a lot about our society and how just messed up we are and how we really shouldn't be that messed up because it's the 21st fucking century. It is narrated from three different perspectives and one of the perspectives is a guy's perspective who's gay and he is the one who is um, supposed to be marrying our main protagonist, Essie. It's great and it isn't really YA, I think that it falls more under the category of fiction slash literary fiction. It was fantastic definitely recommend it. Um, and the other book is actually one that I have. I'm still currently reading it, so I cannot say a lot about it, but it is Our Private Universe by Robin Talley. And this is about a girl who thinks she's bisexual, but can she really know if she's bisexual? Because she hasn't had any experiences with a girl and she hasn't had a lot of experiences with guys, so how can she tell? And this book is I think mainly about that and again she is the daughter of a pastor and she is african-american and she goes to was it mexico i think she goes to mexico for like a church camp is that how it's called and she meets a girl that she's attracted to and things start to happen and again i i'm not even halfway through so it's too soon to tell but this book is having conversations that book should have within them it talks about periods you know women get periods it's a thing. And also, there was a scene where the main protagonist was aroused and it said so because, you know, we can get aroused too. It's not just a boy thing. So, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm loving what this book is doing. It is for a younger audience. Like, this is, this is YA. And I don't mean YA featuring an 18 year old girl. This is YA featuring a 15 year old girl. So, of course, her she's a bit immature, just, just a tiny little bit immature, and her priorities are not really, you know, how they should be. But, you know, it's good, and I'm liking it, and so I cannot wait to see where it goes. Okay, so this was it for this tag. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I'm not gonna tag anybody because, I mean, Pride Month is over. I don't know if other people would love to do it outside of Pride Month. I don't know. I just, whatever. If you want to do it, please do it. Or if you want to answer to these questions um, in the comments down below, please do so. If you have any recommendation whatsoever of LGBTQNA plus books that you loved and that I should read, please, please definitely let me know, especially non-fiction books, because I need to learn more about the community. I'm aware and I'm here ready to learn. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I don't know when exactly I'll film other videos. I'll definitely be back by the end of July, but before then, as I've said, I don't know where I'll be or if I'll be able to film at all. I'll try to vlog in New York. If you want, you can totally follow me on Instagram because I'll use Instagram in New York. I just, oh my god, it's gonna be fucking awesome. Uh, but I also want to say that I'm not really on Twitter anymore. I'm not using Twitter for, um, you know, 
booktube related stuff so if you want to get in touch with me or message me or whatever you can find me on instagram or on goodreads this is it for this video thank you guys so so much for watching and i'll see you soon with another one warm hugs